yes so last class we were discussing thermodynamic quantities right what was the last uh, point that we discussed where we stopped last class work right i guess okay so we are discussing work pv work done have we discussed graph on this no theek hai oh no reversible irreversible we have discussed correct okay we did not start anurag okay so last class we were discussing work pv work we were discussing and we discussed that represented by w and we discuss that work done the formula we have that is w is equals to minus integral p external dv this is what the expression we discussed yeah i know we did formula we know just we are going just a quick recap and then we'll move on correct we have also seen this is for all the process it is applicable right it is applicable for all the process basic expression is this only all processes the derivation the you know work done expression that we get for different different processes will start from here only okay so what is the unit of work done from this pressure is atm and volume is liter so unit is what unit is atm liter and we have also seen the conversion of atm liter into joule one atm liter is 101.325 joule you must take care of it because in the option you will get uh, without converting into joule also like they'll write joule but they won't convert they'll take the magnitude of atm liter only just we write joule over there correct So options when you solve this, suppose you got five atm per liter as the answer you are getting. Option also they'll give like this only five joule, and all other three options will be there. So in hurry, what we do? We don't we forget to you to convert this atm liter into joule, right? And we simply see okay five so five joule is the answer. So don't do this mistake. Okay, it happens very often with students. Okay, this is the one point I would like to highlight. So. conversion is very important this is the conversion wheel now we have also discussed if the wall is rigid right closed rigid container what is the work done work done is zero because there is no expansion or compression hence work done is zero correct reversible irreversible process we have seen have we seen that cyclic process what is the work done 
cyclic process how to find out in cyclic process i think this we haven't done let me just Yeah, so we have done till here. Close rigid container is this. We'll do, we'll do, Anurag. Just a second. Okay. If the process is reversible, for reversible process R P, work done is equals to. We know external pressure is not constant in reversible process, so we have to keep this P external inside the integral sign. But if you have irreversible process ip irreversible process p external is constant and we can take this p external out of the integral sign this is the formula we have okay now suppose if the question is this we have pv graph pressure and volume graph we have volume is given in liter and pressure is given in atm okay so suppose this value is 2 then 4 then 6 and then 8 1 2 three and 4 This is given. The process starts from the point A. This point goes to point B, and then to point C, and then to point D, and then to point A. No, no, we are doing work only. we are doing work only under work only we have this okay so now suppose if this is the process given you need to find out work done in this process okay so this is a cyclic process because we start from a and ends at a the process come back at a only after some time so this is a cyclic process so cyclic process is the process in which the initial and final step is same got it the process in which initial and final step is same could you find out work done in this process How do you find out work done, Aditya? Okay. So all of you see this. two way we can find out the work done in this process i will discuss both ways here 
So total work done is equals to work done in the process A to B plus work done in the process B to C plus work done in the process C to D and then work done in the process D to A. This is the total work done we have. One second, mother will discuss, wait. Okay, so this is the total work done. Now, if you look at this process B to C and D to A, it is a, it is isocodic process. The volume is constant. B to C, we have constant volume, right? D to A, we have constant volume. So constant volume, again, work done is zero in this process. That's why this is zero and this work done is zero simply we can say. If you see this A to B, so see this, this is the case of expansion because volume is increasing, expansion. It is expansion under what pressure? Under four atmospheric pressure. The expansion is taking place under four atmospheric pressures because from A to B, the pressure is constant. So here, work done from A to B is minus P external into V final minus V initial, eight minus one. Is this correct? Did you understand this? Yes, please respond. Plus C to D, external pressure is one, so minus one into final volume minus initial volume. Yeah, it's two, once again. Eight minus two. Right, so when you solve this, you'll get the answer. So eight minus two is six minus four, that is minus 24 this side and it is minus six, one, so it is plus one. So we are getting minus 18 ATM liter is the unit, which we can easily convert into zoom. Correct? So this is one way the formula is this. For each step, we'll find out the work done and we'll add all, we'll get this. So negative we are getting here. Correct? We're getting negative here. This is one way which you can find out. The easier way is what? The easier way is work done when PV graph is given. Listen to me carefully. Work done when PV graph is given. So it is area under the curve, area enclosed by the curve. By the curve or the geometrical figure which is given in the question, right? So geometrical figure is this, it is a rectangle. Its length is six this is six unit and the width is four minus one that is three okay four minus one we have three over here so look at the area here so area enclosed by curve which is length into bits we're getting 18 right 18 unit is obviously atm liter the unit that is given in the question but this area gives you the magnitude of work done it won't give you the sign. It gives you the magnitude only. Whether it is negative or positive, that information you won't have in this formula. But you have one trick that you can memorize and then you can put the sign also if you need it. So best way, if PV graph is given, right? Under the curve, curve must be PV. If PV is not there, we have to take it, we have to convert into PV, correct? So we'll find out area. This process is clockwise or anti-clockwise? It is clockwise, right? So you see the work done is negative in clockwise. If you see this actual method that we have here, work done is negative, right? So we can say if the process is given clockwise, then it is work done by the system. Write down the next line. If the process is clockwise given, clockwise given, it means work done by the system. And work done by the system is what? Negative. We know that if the process is anti-clockwise, 
anti clockwise then it is work done on the system which is positive which is positive correct so just look at the process here it is a clockwise process right which is given here it is a clockwise process so work done by the system hence the answer in this question would be work done is whatever magnitude you get it is by the system so minus sign you have to put in atm theta this is the answer we have here did you understand this cyclic process is what like i said initial and final state is same so whatever the state function we have the change in its state function for cyclic process is always zero okay because it's a cyclic process so state function is this let's right? suppose we have a circle like we have a process like this it starts from the point a it goes like this and reaches at point a again so initial and final step is same so delta u is what it is uf minus ui but uf and ui is the same only because the state is same that's why it is zero so all the change in state function is always zero for cyclic process all these are zero okay so this is the first thermodynamic quantity next second thermodynamic quantity you write down it is heat what is heat heat is the energy transferred one second i'm going back heat is represented by q first of all okay definition write down it is the
energy transfer it is the energy transfer which takes place which takes place because of difference in temperature because of difference in temperature a hot object you keep in touch with a cold object the heat transfer from hot to cold always high temperature to low temperature we also have a convention over here like we have in work like heat is given to the system means if system is absorbing heat heat is given to the system is positive always and heat is released by the system by the system when system is releasing heat it is negative that is what the assumption we have assumption you can say convention you can say anything in this only we'll see heat capacity with the help of heat capacity we can calculate heat okay there's a term called total heat capacity total heat capacity it is the heat required it is the heat required to change the temperature temperature by 1 degree celsius okay unit change in temperature the amount of heat required is heat capacity right it is defined in joule per kelvin the unit that we have heat required per kelvin temperature so if i say if if dq is is the amount of heat required dq is the amount of heat required to change the temperature by dt by dt suppose this is the assumption we are taking that this is happening dq amount of heat you provide and the temperature change by dt so since we need to consider 1 degree rise in temperature then for 1 degree rise what we required you see dq is the amount of heat required for dt change in temperature so 1 degree if you change then the amount of heat required is oh i have written it other way one second dt is the change in temperature the amount of heat required is dq so for 1 degree change in temperature the amount of heat required is dq by dt correct dq by dt 
So this dQ by dt is the total heat capacity. Total heat capacity. Look at the unit here. Q is Joule, T is Kelvin. So it is Joule per Kelvin. Okay. Now this total heat capacity, we have of two types. Yes, possible. Yeah, different substance will have different heat capacity. So this heat capacity is of two types actually. See, we can say that we have taken one mole of substance, correct? And we can say we have one gram of substance, correct? So the amount of heat required to change the temperature by one degree Celsius of one mole of substance, we call it as molar heat capacity. So if you take one mole, it is molar heat capacity. Understood? If you take one gram, then it is a specific heat capacity. Simply we call it a specific heat. Yes, it's possible, Anurag. It's possible that with same amount of heat, the temperature for one substance can be more or less than the other substance. Depends upon the heat capacity of the substance. Concentration as in what? We are not talking about concentration here. Temperature, we can say higher temperature to lower temperature. Once again, once again, once again, Gayatri. See Anurag, what you're talking about, the substance with less heat will be releasing heat to the substance with higher heat. No, it's not like that. You are mixing two things. Two things are different. One is if two objects are at different, different temperature. Correct. When you connect those objects or you keep them in contact, then heat flow from high temperature to low temperature, right? That's one thing. Now heat capacity is what? To what extent the heat can, no. What is the heat content of the system? That is what heat capacity is. We define it for one mole of a substance or one gram of a substance, right? It is not the heat uh, content exactly, but what we say, suppose you have a substance and if you keep on giving heat to the substance, its temperature will rise, correct? So the amount of heat required when the temperature increases by one degree is the total heat capacity of that particular substance, right? Total heat capacity of that particular substance, okay? So it is defined for rise in temperature or decrease in temperature of one degree. But whenever you have hot and cold body, temperature always flow from, sorry, heat always flow from hot to cold, not cold to hot, till the temperature becomes equal in both objects. 
so heat capacity is not like that okay yes you can say that aditya that if, if the amount is more mass is more then obviously we required more temperature in that case only we count we calculate heat capacity either in terms of mole or in terms of mass right so two things are different anurag like for an object what is the amount of heat required to raise or decrease the temperature by 1 degree it's different and once you have two object with different temperature then heat flows from high temperature to low temperature these are two things we have so it's possible that heat can flow from a substance with less heat from a substance with less heat given heat to the substance with higher heat that have same mass no that is not possible we can't say that less heat see heat and temperature are two different things we have i am saying heat flows from high temperature to low temperature right you are saying possible that heat can flow from a substance with less heat we cannot say that right if temperature is higher than is fine but you are taking a hypothetical case which is not possible actually see two things you are mixing you have an object correct right? suppose you have a uh, um an insulated object ideally we don't have any insulated object but suppose we have an we have one object which is very refrain you know which is very you know to to increase the temperature of that particular object is very difficult and one you have suppose one uh, substance is wood you are, you take an example and one substance is metal so obviously metal that raise the, the the increase in temperature of metal would be more than to that of heat would be more than to that of sorry wood correct slightly you heat you supply the temperature of the metal will increase iron rod will increase correct but for wood we require more amount of heat so we can say that metal will have higher heat capacity right than wood because with less heat only it can rise in temperature by 1 degree so wood the heat capacity is not that great this is one thing another thing if wood at suppose 500 degree celsius and metal at suppose 10 degree celsius which is a very difficult case it's not possible right with same amount of heat if you provide it is not possible that same amount of heat wood will be at 500 degree celsius and metal will be at 100 degree celsius that's not possible and that is what you are talking about okay so heat capacity is defined when we talk about the change in temperature but when it when it comes to the transfer of heat it is always from high temperature to low temperature yeah we can relate that one second i am coming to that point molar heat and specific heat capacity we can relate we will come to that point okay so i hope you understand this two things okay you see molar heat capacity is what it is defined for one mole very simple it is to one degree rise in temperature what is the heat required here everything is same we also add one mole of substance here okay okay anurag you think about it later probably you will get it okay it happens sometimes okay no that's not a problem yeah okay so molar heat capacity you see um it is the amount of heat required amount of heat required to raise the temperature raise or change anything you can write raise or change by 1 degree 
of one mole of a substance. ठीक है सो वन मोल इफ यू से इफ यू सी इट इज मोलर हीट कैपेसिटी सेम थिंग वी हैव हियर बट इंस्टेड ऑफ वन मोल वी हैव वन ग्राम ऑफ सब्सटेंस दैट्स द ओनली डिफरेंस वन ग्राम ऑफ सब्सटेंस ओके सो वन मोल सो मोलर हीट कैपेसिटी वन ग्राम सो स्पेसिफिक हीट कैपेसिटी द नोटेशन यू सी मोलर हीट कैपेसिटी इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय A small c, usually. A small c, right? This one is represented by s or capital C. Capital C we denote like this. S or capital C. So unit of molar heat capacity is joule per mole Kelvin. so with this unit you will understand whether molar heat capacity is given or specific heat capacity is given this would be a joule per gram kelvin okay so we can write the expression as dq is equals to we can write c dt if it is molar heat capacity then suppose c m i'll write down molar heat capacity c m dt specific heat so c uh, or s dt will write down if you have n number of moles n c m dt m mass so m s dt here then if you integrate it depending upon the value of c we can write q is equals to c delta t n c m delta t molar heat capacity it is it is m s delta t specific heat capacity so this relation we can write only when only when the con the specific heat capacity is independent of temperature this we can write if and only if if and only if a specific heat capacity is independent of temperature right mostly heat capacity is is independent only or the change in heat capacity is negligible with respect to temperature so if it is not mentioned then we consider it as constant One second, Pranav. I'll go back. One second. This C is total heat capacity. C M is molar heat capacity. s is the specific heat capacity
Yes. Copy this down, Pranam. Okay. So next question is how it is independent of temperature. See, first of all, it is a fact. Second thing is what? You have an object, correct? At whatever temperature, whatever, whatever you want, you can assume. And you want to increase the temperature by one degree. So you must provide some heat here. Q. Correct. Does this Q depend upon this temperature? No. Whatever the temperature is, we have to see with what amount of heat one degree rise in temperature is possible. Or what heat you release, you take out so that one degree decrease in temperature. So it is obviously it should be independent of temperature. Should be in, in, mostly it is the same only, okay. But in some cases it is it is not uh, possible. Like in, in cases of gas or something like that, uh, always it is not true. Mostly the fact is correct, right? That the specific heat capacity is independent of temperature, because we are talking about one degree rise in temperature, right? So it's per Kelvin we have, per unit temperature we have this calculation. So whatever the temperature we have for this object. From that, you need to rise the temperature by one degree or decrease by one degree. So it has nothing to do with the temperature over here. But in some, sometimes what happens, they will give you the relation of specific heat capacity with temperature. Like suppose A T square B T plus X. This kind of relation, suppose it is given in the question. If it is given, then only we'll assume it is not constant. Then what you need to do? this values, this expression, you need to substitute here and then multiply with dt, integrate it. That is what you want to do. You have to do over there. Understood this? Weber? Okay. So this kind of expression, if it is not given, then we consider this as constant. Otherwise, we have to consider the expression, substitute it here and then solve. Okay. One note you write down. Change in heat capacity with temperature is negligible. Change in heat capacity with temperature is negligible. with temperature is negligible. So if it is not mentioned, so if it is not mentioned, we assume it as constant. Assume it as constant. Okay, so why does heat capacity change? See, heat capacity usually, it does not change with temperature. But when there is a motion kind like suppose if gaseous particles are moving, so de depending upon the temperature of the gaseous particles, its kinetic energy varies. And then we have very frequent collision or very less number of collision, correct. With that, we have certain heat exchange. 
because of that heat exchange or heat dissipates into the atmosphere it affects the you know heat capacity of the substance because if it has if it, the heat is going out from the gaseous molecule right so temperature should decrease and you are providing heat right from outside to increase or decrease the temperature by 1 degree so whatever the manner whether the heat you are want to increase or decrease since because of the motion of the particles heat is getting you know uh, out into the atmosphere so overall the heat capacity of the substance gets affected correct because heat is not constant for the substance it is changing because of the frequent collision yeah i'll repeat the note again once again stress understand no doubt yeah right the, the note i said change in heat capacity with temperature is negligible so if it is not mentioned we assume it as constant so if it is not mentioned we assume it as constant done shesh yeah now you see the the value of c could be anything depending upon the process its value of heat capacity c varies from 0 to infinity any value possible for c like you see depending upon the process we calculate a specific heat capacity or a heat capacity simply first one we have suppose we have isothermal process when we have isothermal process what is delta t delta t is zero okay delta t is zero so what is dq we know dq is equals to c delta t or c dt dt is zero so the c is what c is infinity here right c is infinity similarly if you talk about adiabatic process adiabatic process what is adiabatic process dq is zero right dq is zero so when dq is zero so obviously from here you see c also becomes zero So you see, it has a very wide range from zero to infinity. Its values may vary. Just one second. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Did you copy this? Correct. So this is the value which possible we have C zero to infinity. Now, when the process is isochoric, isochoric is what? isochoric 
its volume constant right so we have delta v equals to 0 which means work done is 0 work done is 0 means dq is equals to du we can write dq is equals to du we can write yes or no first law of thermodynamics we haven't done but we'll do the amount of heat that you are providing in is equals to du plus dw we have correct so dq is equals to du we have you can understand this one also a bit later just for now you just keep this in mind dq is equals to du we have work done when it is zero right so hence c here the, the total heat capacity at constant volume it becomes cv is equals to dq by dt dq is nothing but du here so it is further equals to du by dt and hence du is equals to cv dt du is equals to cv dt for one mole if you have n number of moles then du is equals to n cv dt for n number of moles okay remember one thing here i have written du is equals to n cv dt but this formula is valid for all process whether the volume is constant or not for all processes right if the val volume is not constant then also it is valid and we'll get back to this uh, you know formula again after some time okay when we talk about thermodynamic quantities that is internal energy we'll talk about it again okay just you let it be here now so always remember is cvdt but it does not mean it is valid only when the volume is constant no it is valid for all processes how we'll explain this later okay now last one we have here is isobaric process isobaric process so it is constant pressure so the molar heat capacity molar heat capacity at constant pressure equals to cp cv also the previous one that one is the molar heat capacity at constant volume right that is the molar heat capacity at constant volume this is a constant pressure so when volume when the pressure is constant then dq is nothing but dh enthalpy change we'll see this one also when we discuss enthalpy enthalpy is the heat content of the system at constant pressure Okay, dq is equals to dh. Enthalpy definition is what? Enthalpy is the heat content of the system of the system at constant pressure. So when you have constant pressure, heat is dq, it becomes dh. So here Cp is equals to, we have dq by dt, 
but since we have constant pressure so dq by dt at constant pressure it becomes dh by dt and that is why dh the enthalpy change is n cp dt for n number of moles yes this is also true for all processes so here maybe you are not understanding this that how it is true for all processes because we starting with started with the constant pressure condition correct so from here you won't understand it but we'll discuss this separately we'll see what is enthalpy and how this formula comes okay then you will understand that is valid for all processes okay we'll discuss that later okay now you see this relation between between molar and and specific heat capacity relationship between molar and specific heat capacity see if cp is the molar heat capacity smaller one and cp the capital one is the specific heat capacity it is related by this one m is the molecular mass cp is equals to mcp similarly molar heat capacity at constant volume cv is n times of cv where cv is the specific heat capacity here this is the relation we have okay must write down this this is the molar heat capacity this is the at constant pressure constant pressure it is the molar heat capacity at constant at constant volume what constant pressure on rag because cp is written here no cp at constant pressure at constant volume A specific heat capacity this is also m is the molar mass i'll i'll do that wait a second let me finish this first it is specific heat capacity let me write down i'll explain m is what m is the molecular mass
This is also the molecular mass. Okay. See, if you look at the term here, Cp is defined for molar heat capacity for one mole. Right. Means one mole of substance if you take, then the amount of heat required to change the temperature by one degree is Cp. Correct. So this one mole is equals to what we can write? M if it is the molecular mass. So M gram we have. Okay. Correct. Cp is one mole, one mole is m gram. And for one gram, one gram we have Cp, capital Cp, right? So for m gram, how much we have? It is m times into Cp, capital Cp. So mcp is nothing but equals to this Cp here. Where this Cp is the, is what? Is the specific heat capacity this Cp is the molar heat capacity. Did you get it? Or should I do this again? Tell me. Okay. Okay. I'll go to the next slide and explain this. See, the small Cp, if you write down, why it is important? Because on this question, they have asked once. The small Cp, and capital Cp. Like this, if they write down in the test paper, no, you won't understand whether it is, you know, it is molar heat capacity or specific heat capacity. You won't get it, right? The relation of molar heat capacity, this is equals to this is equals to the molecular mass into Cp, the specific heat capacity. That's what I said. Left hand, side, left hand side, we have molar and right side, we have specific. So what we do in a specific heat capacity, if you multiply by molar mass, it becomes a, a molar heat capacity. Yes, yes, yes. All these things we have, Temperature and Cp, we don't have any relation. You don't have to consider the relation of T and C here. If it is not given in the question, just ignore it. You don't have to think about it. Now, how do we write down this relation you see? If I write down the specific heat capacity, Cp, this specific heat capacity is for one gram, yes or no? See, specific heat capacity is represented by capital C or S, both way. Okay. In book or in question, sometimes they have written as C only. That's why I'm explaining this. Okay. So one gram is Cp. So what about the molecular mass M gram? How much it is? M times Cp. What is this Cp? Molar or specific? What is the Cp, molar or specific? A specific heat capacity, correct? M gram equals to what? One mole. Can we say that because M is the molar mass? One mole. And for one mole, how, what, what we have? We have the specific heat capacity Cp. That's why if, sorry, molar heat capacity Cp. That's why if a specific heat capacity is multiplied by the molar mass, it becomes what? it becomes the molar heat capacity. Did you understand it? Yes, clear? So one gram is a specific heat. M gram is M times into a specific heat. M gram is one mole. One mole is molar heat. So molar heat is nothing but one mole. One mole for M gram. M grams or MCP, so molar heat is equals to M times into the specific heat. Yeah, one second, I'll go back. 
Clear? Understood, guys? We will discuss one question on this, okay, later a bit because few more things we need to understand first, and then we'll discuss a question on this. You only you will understand how they ask questions here. That we'll do after first log thermodynamics. Which one, Anurag, you did not get? Let me go back. This is what we are discussing, you know. This one. Yes, specific part is this only. This one. Achha, okay, what happens in that? Tell me. Why it is that CP and CB? That's what you are saying. Yeah, so that's the condition that we are taking. No, that's the condition we are taking. We can have isobaric process, no constant pressure process. So constant pressure process, we have CP, the molar heat capacity, or a specific heat capacity. At constant volume, we have CV, the molar heat capacity at constant volume or a specific heat capacity at constant volume. We have the relation of CP and CB. We can find out CP from CB and CB from CP. We have that relation, we can convert it. Right. Yeah, tell me Anurag. See, thing is, we have constant pressure, right? We have constant pressure, CP. No, that is the condition I have taken. In different, different process, what happens? What happens in isothermal process? We are trying to understand the value of C. So we have taken different, different process, isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, right? Adiabatic, all these processes. So in case of isochoric process, the molar heat capacity is set, is right at CV because volume is constant. Just to mention that the volume is constant. Right? Isobaric process, pressure is constant, so CP we have. But since this relation is valid for all the processes, correct. So if you don't write also, it's not wrong. You will get the answer, right? You will get the answer that it is du is equals to NC dt simply you write down. 
You don't write NCVDT, but you will get the answer. But since we have here, DQ becomes DU at constant volume, just to mention that we are writing down there VCD. That is it. Okay. When we do the actual relation, no, then you will understand it. I think you will have the better understanding then. But yes, here, it, this is the confusion that when we write DU is equals to, DU is equals to NCVDT, and we say that it is valid for all processes. Then what is the point of writing down this CV? Simply we can write NCDT also. This is what you meant, I guess, right? Yes, so simply we have since isocodic process we are assuming, just for that process we are assuming this. If you write this also, it's not wrong, you will get the same answer. Because this CV has nothing to do with constant volume. It is applied for all process. Give me some more time, we'll have a discussion on it. You will have a better idea. Okay, so this is the CV we have over here. Now, next is internal energy. The next thermodynamic term, work heat we have done. Now we'll discuss internal energy, third one. And after this, we'll see the first law of thermodynamics. Internal energy is represented by U or E. Anything, capital U, capital E. What is internal energy? It is a sum of all energy, basically. Whatever kind of energy you can think of for the system. Like kinetic energy, potential energy, and chemical energy. Chemical energy involves all those bond making, bond breaking, right, nuclear energy, everything is there. All kind of energy you can consider, right? So that's why since all different kinds of energy, translation, motion, rotational motion, okay, linear motion, potential energy is because of the relative position of the molecules. All these kind of energy, if you add, you will get internal energy. That's why it's very difficult to find out the absolute value of internal energy. There are so many terms. So absolute value is very difficult to find out. Hence, we always find or calculate delta U, change in internal energy. We don't find the absolute value of internal energy. In question also, they'll ask you to find out the change in internal energy. They won't ask you to find out the absolute value, right? Because it is difficult to calculate the absolute value of internal energy, okay? Now, if you look at this kinetic energy, we know this kinetic energy is a function of temperature, isn't it? Potential energy is the function of volume. Because when volume is less, the molecules are contract, they are close to each other, right? And hence, they can have, if relative distance is less or more, relatively we can say that potential energy is there. Because potential energy is because of the relative position of the atoms or molecules, right? So it is the function of volume, it is a function of kinetic energy, temperature. So we can say the internal energy is a function of temperature and volume, two variables we have here. Right? So, if I find out du, the change in internal energy, this is equals to dou u by dou t at constant volume into dt plus dou u by dou t dou v at constant temperature into dt. In See, we are just considering the relative distance of the molecule. If the volume is high, right, relative distance is also high. One second, Weber. If the volume is small, relative distance is small. Molecules are close to each other. 
hence the potential energy also changes that's why it is a function of volume understood internal interaction of what molecules only that interaction gets affected when the volume is less they are close to each other no correct so that's how the thing is so this is one thing now you see one thing here what is do u by do t at constant volume just now we did du is equals to this is what n cv dt this particular term is n cv into dt we already have plus do u by do t do v at constant temperature into dt if you talk about the change in internal energy this is the formula for change in internal energy have you seen this formula have you seen this formula are you finding it difficult how many of you are finding it difficult you must have you, you must have seen du is equals to ncv dt correct yeah we'll also come back to that from step 1 to step 2 because potential energy is a function of volume kinetic energy is a function of temperature so we can say the internal energy is the function of both temperature and volume correct anurag ha ah, vibhav i am coming to your doubt one second yes why you did not get it what happened anurag today you haven't uh, you know eaten or something have you had your lunch no sleep acha why no sleep exams are going on then okay you were coding all night and then you were saying so what is the point of this all night you were coding and then now you are not able to concentrate ha i'll explain again wait see simple hai. potential and in, internal energy depends upon kinetic energy potential energy chemical energy jitna bhi sara energy hai system ka sabko add kar do you will get the internal energy basic idea yahi hai right all kinds of energy of the system you add it up you will have internal energy theek hai now major portion we have here is kinetic energy mostly it is kinetic energy right chemical energy the chemical reactions nuclear reactions bond breaking bond making does not affect much so generally we ignore this but for to to say internal energy we add all these things we consider mainly these two factors are there which affects the internal energy of a system now potential energy is what it is because of relative distance of the molecules so if you have very high volume correct then the molecules are far apart right but if the volume is very less small then the molecules are closer to each other right they are closer to each other so because of the relative distance is less over here so it affects the potential energy of the system right there will be repulsion attraction many things correct but all these things will be less when the distance is more correct so we say the potential energy is a function of volume what volume it has been occupied function of volume kinetic energy we already know it is a function of temperature we have discussed this in gaseous state also right see volume affects the relative distance between the molecule and potential energy is because of the relative position that's why it affects the potential energy
वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड पोटेंशियल एनर्जी यू सी इफ यू हैव इन टर्म्स ऑफ चार्ज इफ ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके इफ द टू चार्ज क्यू वन एंड क्यू टू आर प्लेस एट सम डिस्टेंस द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज डिफाइंड एज माइनस ऑफ के क्यू वन क्यू टू बाय आर हैव डन दिस इन एटोमिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑल्सो यूज दिस फॉर्मूला सो यू सी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी डिपेंड्स अपॉन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द टू चार्जेस राइट इट इज इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पोटेंशियल एनर्जी Which, because of the mass of the object, we can have gravitational potential energy. Concern is not this that whether it is electrostatic or gravitational. Concern is potential energy always depends upon the distance between the two particles. Yes, and that is what I am saying over here. That if you have gaseous particles present, when the distance is less, will have certain potential energy, low potential energy. When the distance is more. the potential energy is less because we have negative sign over here so less or more is not the concern yeah electrostatic attraction is coulomb's law only this is coulomb's law when you have mass then gravitational potential energy we have or coulomb's law then gravitational uh, potential energy we have all these things but the point is whether it is electrostatic or gravitational distance between the charge or atoms or molecules is a factor of potential energy clear correct i'll come to the second term wait just a second first you understand potential energy is a function of volume kinetic energy is a function of temperature that's fine that's what i have written over here u is function of temperature and volume now this is the eiler's theorem we have eiler's theorem is when a variable dependent variable depends upon two independent variable then we can differentiate this variable with respect to the independent variable keeping the other variable constant so this means differentiation of u with respect to t keeping v constant that is what it means means one variable will keep constant and with with we differentiate the term with respect to the other variables so this is partial derivative do means partial derivative correct do means partial derivative so once we have differentiated with respect to t keeping v constant plus the other one will do now we'll differentiate with respect to v keeping t constant we'll get this this is not in your syllabus actually this one is not in your syllabus but just one line we are not going to use it why i have written this because du by dt do u by du do t we can write ncv the formula just before we did the last page you see we have done this formula in case of constant uh volume tell me acha second term must be dv ha that's right this is the yes this is dv correct 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 this is dv yeah that's right ठीक है ओके नाउ दिस इज द एक्चुअल चेंज इन इंटरनल एनर्जी यू मस्ट हैव डन दिस फॉर्मूला डी यू इज इक्वल्स टू एन सी वी डी टी सो दैट फॉर्मूला ऑल्सो वी गेट फ्रॉम दिस वन नाउ यू टेल मी वन थिंग हैव वी अप्लाइड एनी कंडीशन टिल हियर हैव वी अप्लाइड एनी कंडीशन एनी केस यस यू मस्ट राइट इट डाउन बिकॉज the formula du is equals to ncv dt you will understand why it is you know valid for all processes whether volume is constant or not see till here we did not apply any condition that constant volume or whatever it is we haven't done anything right what is this term du by dv 
you see this. Let me just go to the next slide and just make you understand this first. Do you by do we, if you see, what is you? You is the energy. Energy by volume. What is volume? Volume is let it be V only. And energy we can write P into V because P into V is work done. Work done is nothing but energy. This we can write. So this becomes P finally. So do you by do V has the dimension of pressure. Has the dimension of what? Dimension of pressure. Okay. And in fact, it is the internal pressure of the gases. In fact, it is the internal pressure of the gas. Now, if you talk about for ideal gas, this is the condition I'm applying now, okay? For ideal gas. Do we have internal pressure in ideal gas? Do we have internal interaction in an ideal gas? Tell me. No. You know, ideal gas do not interact, right? So no internal interaction. This means what? Do you by do V for ideal gas is what? It should be zero. Can we say that it is zero? Yes, it is zero. This zero, if you substitute in that formula of du, then it becomes du is equals to n c v d t. So you see, in this expression, we haven't done, we haven't taken the condition of constant volume. So this formula. Du is equals to NCVDT is correct for ideal gas. This is the condition we have. And mostly we deal with ideal gas only. That's why we use this formula. If ideal gas is not there, this formula we cannot apply. You have to consider pressure there, substitute the value in the given expression, and then you will get a change in internal energy. Right? Tell me, understood this? No, pressure is not force. Internal pressure means when the gaseous molecules interact, right? They have some interaction, they will have some forces. Because of that, we'll have some pressure. That pressure is internal pressure. No, pressure of the gas. The gaseous molecules interact because the interaction of the gaseous molecule, the pressure that we have is internal pressure. No, no, it's not on the container. It's, it's see, it's the pressure among the gaseous molecule. Right? Pressure among the gaseous molecules. Suppose we have two molecules. So when these two molecules collide, because of that, the pressure exerted on each other is the internal pressure. This pressure is not there because there is no interaction. Correct? So this formula is true for ideal gas. Could you tell me, do you have any, any conditions under which this relation is true for real gas? Do we have any condition under which this relation is true for real gas? By large volume at absolute zero, what? Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, 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 you're going somewhere else. Acha, you have applied the condition of ideal gas. No, for real gas. Ha, that's that we can say. Ideally, it becomes ideal gas only, no? Real gas at high pressure and low temperature, low pressure, high, high temperature becomes ideal gas only. So the same condition. This is applicable for real gas also. If the real gas is present in a rigid container, if the container is rigid, fixed wall, no movement is there, right? No work done is there. Expansion contraction is not there. Then delta V would be zero. Right, and then again, the, we have the same pressure here, right? So write down the next one here. For closed rigid container,
for closed rigid container we have dv is equals to 0 and hence du is equals to ncv dt so this is true even for real gas if it is present in a rigid container right true for real gas if it is present in in a rigid container correct so this formula we can apply for real gas if the container is rigid that is a condition we have yeah we'll do uh, just a second we'll we'll discuss first law after this and then we'll do some questions tell me any doubt here 